Hello everybody, um, so welcome to my video and this video um, I'm not going to give you a massive um, lecture so to speak, I want to give you something that's going to be helpful and gives you um, um, pointers in the right direction so you don't make mistakes or silly mistakes. So the first thing is um, obviously it's about selecting the right monologue. Um, now before you do any of that it's very important that you um, know what drama school, um, what they want from you, um, what is it they, that they're asking for for the audition. Make sure you understand this. Um, are they basically, do they provide monologues for you to select from or do they leave it to you? Um, how many do you need to choose? Is it a classical? Is it a contemporary piece? Um, the other thing is that um, one thing that I would um, suggest um, is that you inquire and ask would it be okay if you could choose a monologue from um, a film because there are, for me anyway, I, I think there are some brilliant monologues that um, are in films that um, you could you know, do live in an audition but you'd have to check that uh, to see if that's okay so if you do do that obviously it just opens your um, your repertoire of choosing, you know, the right monologue for you, as well as choosing from plays. But don't do that without without asking. Really important. Um, the other thing is that it's you know at this stage in your career, it's it's important that you basically, you know, you, you make the right choices. So choose, you know, a monologue from you know a popular play choice from a well known play you know, um, rather than a bad monologue from a crappy play. Um, that's not to say that obs obscure plays can't be, you know, brilliant, of course they can. Um, you know, you just have to be sure, I suppose. But, you know, if you're in doubt, you know, always ask, you know, ask for um, help. You know, you can always ask me or other, other staff members on the course, I suppose, but um, people that you trust in that sense. Um, so, you know, the other thing that I was going to say is that... So, there are three things um, that you need to do. So, the first thing is um, you need to prepare. The second thing is you need to prepare. And the third thing is you need the discipline to make all them three things work. Okay, so um, now without the preparation and discipline, you know, you are not going to be at the best you can possibly be. You might be good, but you need to be better if you're going to stand out and obviously making the, the right impression so you get selected for the, for the drama course that you earned, uh, sorry, for the uh, drama school you're applying for. So, the, you know, three things. First of all, uh, number one, you need to make sure that you choose well. Uh, the second thing is your preparation um, for making sure that you can get the best out of the monologue you've chosen and um, the third one is um, obviously performing. So let's go back to the first one, choosing. Um, one thing that I will say is that uh, make sure that when you choose a monologue that it's basically close to your own, your own age um, and ideally Make sure it's with um, your own accent. Um, you, you know, so if you think you are, you know, you you be, you could play like a flea bag or um, a Lady Macbeth um, type of character that you'd be ideally cast to play, then go for it. Um, um, the other thing is that. Make sure that it shows uh, the monologue that you select. Make sure it shows that um, a good range of emotions in the monologue. Um, and also make sure that you choose a monologue that you're comfortable with. You know, choose something that you can relate to. There might be something in the monologue that um, you might have an experience with. They might be talking about something specific that you have. A connection to or you might have had that experience that 
you know you could use to your advantage where you could express it you know true from the heart um the other thing is you know when you choose you know don't think that the monologue has to be something that's dark and gritty you know comedy works just as well you know sometimes you know lightening the mood you know as a contrast if you've got to do two pieces you know obviously make sure that there's a nice contrast between the two so then you're showing your your acting range um, and you're not showing something that you you know um, you know um, that you're a one-trick pony so to speak that you're good at comedy but you can't do anything else um, so you know they will see flaws in your performance they'll see brilliant things as well but you are not the finished article you know and so don't be um, um, too hard on yourself in that sense so um, choosing you know that's the first thing make sure that you choose a monologue it's close to your age your age sorry um, make sure that it shows a good range of emotion um, so you can demonstrate your skill and your talent and choose a monologue that you feel comfortable with. Make sure that you feel comfortable with and you can relate to. <laughs> is selected from a published play text. Um, again, when I mentioned earlier about obscure plays, you know, some of them might not have been tried and tested or performed on stage. Um, and therefore, the might the monologue might be weak. Um, it might be from a play that is mediocre or is not that good to tell you the truth. So um, safe bet is you know probably to you know select a monologue from a play that has been published, uh, that's been tried and tested on stage. Okay. So once you've got something that you are comfortable with or you've selected from the list that's been given to you from drama school. The second thing is now is your preparation. Okay, um, so the first thing that I would strongly suggest is that you basically, um, you read the whole play, not just the monologue, make sure that you read the whole play, understand the story, understand um, how your character fits into the story. What is their motivation? What is their relationships like with other characters? Um, um, and this is really important. And also, what is the motivation? Why was the play written? Is there any anything that you could find out through some research, you know, about why the playwright wrote the play? Um, that's useful to know. Who wrote the play? What is the author's name? Um, so, you know, get to grips with what the play is about. And this is really important because there is every chance that when you're doing your um, audition, um, sometimes before, sometimes after, you may get asked a question. And the question might be, who wrote the play and what was their motivation for writing the play or their experience? Another one was, can you tell me more about the character outside the scene, whether they fit into the play? So, you know, that's good because that shows um, the audition panel if you have read the play and you've done research that you're you're not limited just to performing you're prepared to put the extra mile in in order to get inside the play and obviously understand the character further than anybody else and that's great anyway because it shows that you're prepared to use your initiative to go um, um, further with um, your performance which is brilliant um, but the other thing is, you'll be surprised how many, it's sad in a way, how many um, people who audition do not bother to read the whole play. And when they get asked questions, it does, it puts a massive um, negative against them auditioning, sadly, because, you know, they, they, they haven't thought outside the box, they haven't done the extra bit of work that's necessary as a performer. Um, and don't forget, you only get one shot at the audition so to speak, so you need to make a really good impression. So if it means doing the extra bits, do the extra bits because there'll be other people who are, all, who are auditioning who will not have read the play, but you have, and that will go, um, that will make a good um, impression on your behalf. Okay, the other thing is, if you can, try and watch the play. If it's being performed, go and watch the play and see um, whoever's playing the character you've selected for your monologue, 
um, see how they perform it, see how they fit into the play. Um, that's always useful. Uh, the other thing I would suggest is um, um, create a character profile on your character. Um, this won't be given in the play, or oh, sometimes there might be some things that are given to you, but um, how old are they? Um, where do they live? What's their job? Um, and then you can expand off that and create all other things you feel will make you understand and appreciate the character much more. Start rehearsing. You know, put the efforts in to rehearse. Um, know the lines inside out. Know them back to front. You know, um, identify also that where the where the emotional arc is in the monologue. You know, um, are there any turning points in the monologue that um, um, heighten the tension? Um, this is really important. Um, you know, um, because you don't you don't want to come across as sort of like robotic or in monotone, where you just sound the same all the way through. Are there any um, changes in delivery? Look for um, identify um, pauses as well. Pauses can add dramatic intensity, but when you add a pause in the right place, it gives the listener and the people who are watching your audition a chance to reflect on what it is that you've said before, and they 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 digest it. Only for them two or three seconds, depending on a long or a, um, a short or a long pause, they will have that time, um, and they'll be watching you. And this gives you a chance to reflect on what it is that you've said. So. Your reaction and response is also helping you as well with your face and your body language and how you use the stage space. Um, so that's really important. The so pauses, you know, make sure that you you put I'd say at least five pauses in there. Like I said before, long or short, you know, um, adds that bit of interest and, and intrigue, dramatic intensity. Um, and like I mentioned before, um, to avoid doing accents unless you're really good at them. Um, you don't want to have someone on the audition panel who is from the area or the location that your, um, your character is from performing with an accent that you're not brilliant at. Um, because they'll pick up on the flaws, you know, you might, you know, unless you, you are absolutely brilliant, I, I try to avoid um, accents. Um, and the other thing is um, look for the pace in the piece. Um, how does the pace change? Does it start slow? Does it start fast? Um, the intonation in your voice, up and down, how does it rise? How does it fall? Where do the pauses come in? So. This is really important um, that you get this right because this um, sounds better on the ear and it's nice also to watch you perform. Again, you don't want to come across where you're flat or you're just in one tone all the way through. Um, so the intonation brings interest, the pause brings dramatic intensity, and look for the emo emotional arc in the character. Uh, the other thing I would say is if it says two minutes, do not do not go over two minutes. You know, you, know you, you, you could fall between one minute 40, 45, up to two minutes. You know, you're better off stopping at one minute 50 than two minutes 10. You know, I have, I know uh, that there are some people who have stopped people auditioning as soon as they reach two minutes. And that's, that's really sad because, um, towards the end of the piece is when you get the climax of the piece so they've missed the 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 sort of the build-ups being there but they've missed the end part and you know usually that usually that's the most interesting or the juiciest part the twist in the tale so to speak um, so stick to your two minutes um that should be specified you know with any drama school audition you're on for 
how long they would like you to perform or to stick to it. Okay. And the other thing that I will say, obviously from a performance perspective, is that um, when you're um, when you are or just before you're ready to go for your audition, I strongly advise that you warm up. You warm up. It's really important because um, for me anyway, there are three things that you need to do, which is what I'm about to talk about now. But um, take the time. Do not be intimidated about other people being at the audition um, and what they might be doing or talking about or where they've come from. Um, some people can be intimidated by lots of other people, particularly people who have had more experience. Enjoy the occasion. If you've put the hard work in and you've prepared well and you've found the discipline and you know your stuff, I always say enjoy it. Treat it like an adventure but give your best and enjoy the occasion. You're going to have some nerves but um, by doing the right warm up, which is what I'm going to show you in a moment, um, it will put you in the right frame of mind and you will know by having the warm up you are at your maximum um, you you couldn't do anything else you prepared well and you're in the right frame of mind and now you're ready to enjoy it and give the best you can okay so now I'm going to go on to warming up <laughs> This is the um, second part to my video um, on how to prepare for auditions for drama school. So this particular video is, or the second part of the video, is focusing on warming up. Now you already know how important it is to warm up, um, and whether that's for warming up at the start of rehearsals or actually um, warming up before you go into actual performance. Um, but it's also important to warm up I believe before you go into any type of audition. Some people or a lot of people I you know don't warm up before audition which I think is quite ironic and um, a bit foolhardy to tell you the truth because if you put all the preparation in and um, you still want to give yourself the chance to be at your very best um, and to be at your very best, it's important that your, your mind's in the right place and you're warmed up, ready to give the best performance possible. So, um, there are three things I do in order to make sure that my, I'm at my very best and the actors I direct and work with are, are at their very best, whether it's in rehearsal or performance, and that is to focus the mind, warm up the body, take away the tension, and to warm up the voice. Um, so, um, I'm going to go through three particular exercises um, that obviously focus on them three areas, which is the mind, the, the body and the voice. So the first thing um, that I suggest you could do, now you don't have to do this in a group of people when you're at, at an audition where there's probably 20, 30 of you waiting to go into audition, you could do. Um, if you want to, but you don't have to. You can always find a quiet space to do this, to get yourself in the right frame of mind. And there are numerous ways you can do this to get your mind focused. Sometimes it can just be to sit in a quiet place. I have actually sat in a, a toilet cubicle before when I've had auditions in the past in order to get away from the hustle and bustle and any particular noise. Um, so that's always helped me. Um, if you can't find that space in particular, but um, focus in the mind. So one of the things that I do to focus the mind of the actors I work with, and um, before I used to go into audition, was to really control and focus on my breathing. So a couple of exercises that you could do, uh, depending on the situation and the place you're in, are you could do a semi-supine, or you could actually um, just um, do diaphragmatic breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, so that's deep breathing where you get to control the diaphragm um, and it, it sort of um, relaxes the body and focuses the mind. So the diaphragmatic breathing, it's um, basically a counting for four, you hold for four and you release for four. Um, after the first cycle you then increase the release of breath to six, then to eight 
and then to 10. You can go as high as you want um, without obviously, um, depending on how much time you've got as well, but without actually um, getting out of breath. So diaphragmatic breathing, stand so your feet are shoulder width apart. Okay, roll shoulders back, lengthen the spine, release the tension in the back and relax the arms to the side of the body and what you should do when you take a breath in your stomach should rise just slightly okay so you're really taking a maximum intake of breath in the lungs in order to push down on the diaphragm and then work the diaphragm or let the diaphragm work in order to release the breath back up now the diaphragm is a muscle that you're strengthening and controlling in order to control that breath and at the same time the breath control will relax the body and focus the mind so it'll go like this i'll talk as i'm doing it i'll try to so you take a deep breath in so you take a breath in before so it's hold out through the mouth in Hold. Out for six. In. Hold. Out for eight. do is you can continue that and um, you can go up to you know 10 12 if at any point you feel dizzy when you're doing that exercise because you're deep breathing um, you just stop straight away and you sit down you just get your wait until the lightheadedness goes diaphragmatic breathing you know is um, really pushing down on the diaphragm you're taking large intakes of oxygen and sometimes it can make you go dizzy but the more you do it, the better you become and it improves your breathing technique and also relaxes the body. It's a great way to get your mind focused. So once you've done your breathing and your mind's focused, the second part to then um, do as part of a wall is the physical. Now the physical, um, there are different ways that you might want to um, get your body um, released of any tension and obviously get the joints and loose and you know get the muscles stretched out and this type of wall is great for bringing energy into the body and now your mind is focused this is where you can just get yourself pumped up slightly without dripping with sweat but you're loose you're mobile and there's no tension there you're not hanging on with any tension so if you are feeling nervous this is really great for releasing that tension so um, I'm going to put on uh, a little bit of music just for the video, but obviously in an audition scenario you might stick your headphones in and you might not do any music at all. As long as you're getting rid of that tension, you're loosening your body, that's fine. So, here's one type of audition, uh, sorry, warm-up that I might do. Um, so, I'm going to put a bit of music on now, here we go. Okay, so, just light on your feet. It's nice and light on your feet. Get your body in any direction. Okay, jumping on the spot. Okay, and right arm up, out to the side. Okay, just get that body to the side. Sorry, right arm to the side. Left arm's gonna go over. Three, two, one, go. I'll tell you also. Why this exercise is brilliant and what else it does for the body for the moment. Okay, and you do that for about, for about a minute and then after that you shake it out and then from there change it onto the other side, left arm to the side. Make sure your arm is horizontal to your shoulder, go across the body. Okay, and then the right arm will go over. Three, two, one. I should have said as well, with the foot bend, with the arm that you did before, you need to reverse it. So I'm reversing the arm, my right arm, 
keep jumping on the spot. So you just got a nice tempo where you're slightly out of breath and you're raising your heart rate. Right? Okay, shake it out. Back to being light on your feet. Just stay nice and light on your feet. Okay, jogging on the squat. Arms up. Now your arms or your fists don't come down here. Bring them up so they're just on line with your nose. Okay, and then your right leg to the side. Left leg to the side. And tick tock. Get ready for the arms to open up. Three, two, one, go. Again, just at a nice pace. And help you don't hold the top where you can start dripping with sweat. Again, you're loosening up muscles. Warm up the muscles, sorry, taking any tension out of the muscles. Okay, and then shake it off. Light on your feet. Okay. And then from there, again, I can feel I've warmed up my body. I've got any tension that was there is now loose, is gone. And I'm ready to go on to the final part of my walk. And the final part is the voice. So the first one was focus the mind, the second one was warm the body, the body, and the third one is the voice. So to start off with, what I'll do, I will work on a face massage. So it's either fingers or knuckles. I prefer knuckles. So you start off on just below the uh, cheekbone on mine with the earlobe and you just go right into the back of the jaw. Just gentle, not too hard. And then drop it down onto the back of the jaw. And if I clench my jaw, you'll see at the back, this muscle on the very end. Okay, just massage gently into there. It's not on the side, it's at the very back. Okay. And then take it along the side of the jaw. Take it into the front of the chin. Okay, and then take it all, go onto the top lip. And then take it up on either side of the um, bridge of the nose. So you're just working gently into the sinuses. Just stretch it out. Just drain the sinuses off. Okay, and then the front of the face. And then take it past along the top of the cheekbones, going onto the side of the temples. Just a bit of pressure, not too hard, but do you need that pressure? And then take it up onto the top of the eyebrows, not into the middle of the forehead, just on the top of the eyebrows. And then take it into the top of the forehead, just kneading and massaging gently into the middle of the forehead. And take it up onto the top of the hairline, just nice and gentle, just working in. And then taking it down, back onto the side of the temples, and take it past the cheekbones, back onto the side of the jaw, and then back up at the back of the jaw. Okay, so I've just given my face um, a bit of a massage. My face now feels a, um, warmer, it's, it's tingling. So I know I've opened up the capillaries, the small veins in the, in the underneath the skin to bring the, the blood to the surface so I've got that warmth and elasticity into my face. Okay, so now I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, called happy and sad. So what you do, if I call happy, um, you just go like this, and slightly exaggerated, it, just a nice smile, and then to say sad, you pull it down, like that. So it's an exaggerated sad, down onto the jowls of the face, and then happy, bring it back up. So what I'm doing here, I'm obviously I'm warming up the, the face around the mouth. Okay, happy and sad, 
happy and sad and happy and sad. If I say extreme happy, um, if I clap, um, you, you snap into it and you open your mouth as wide as you can and your eyes as wide as you can. So you again, you're warming up and you're opening up the muscles around the face. Obviously, um, helps with expression for when you're performing and obviously you bring that elasticity into the um, front of the, around the mouth. So, extreme happy, extreme sad. And with extreme sad, you bring it as tight as you can, almost like a screwed up piece of paper. Get as tight as you can, or you're sucking on a lemon. Extreme happy, extreme sad. Extreme happy, extreme sad. Okay, so you'll continue to do that. And again, once you've got that elasticity into the face and you feel that warmth, then you go on to the next one. So the next one for me is then that you would start doing um, a lip trill. So the lip trill is quite simple, you're just blowing air out, but you're putting vibration into the lips, and this is um, bringing um, warmth again to the front of the face, you're controlling the breath in the oral cavity, which is here, right in the front, so, and you're, you're, you're warming up the resonators as well, so there's three resonators in the head, you've got the nasal resonator, You've got the oral resonator and you've got the vaginal resonator here. So there's three things that you're warming up as part of it and making sure that you're getting the best out of your voice. So Okay, if you want to combine breath control with the literal, that's fine as well. So the release of breath is with the lip trill, so we'll go with that, we'll start with it, we'll go four, six, eight. So the first lip trill with breath control goes like this. Go. Stop. Go for the next release of breath on the lip trill, that's six seconds, go. Good. And the final lip trill um, on eight seconds goes like this. And stop. So they've got that tingling vibration in the lips, so I know they're warmed up, um, which is great. And the next thing now, um, I'm going to work on the vocal folds right in the middle here. <clears throat> so through the trachea, when the air is released, this is all air that's being released through here. The first part that sort of, or the, if you want to say the second part that starts to produce voice or sound, is when the air comes up and it hits right in the centre here on the vocal folds. Now when it hits here, this is the first thing, the first thing it creates is pitch. This is pitch right here. Okay, and what we're going to warm up now are the vocal folds. So it's the cartilage inside and a bit of skin where as the air comes up it vibrates, and as it vibrates it produces pitch. Now sometimes when these aren't warmed up, singers and even performers do find that they get nodules. Now nodules are small blisters. On, the, on folds of skin that um, can be very painful and can you know have a detrimental effect to performance and obviously sometimes career sometimes you know can have re a really bad effect so what I'm going to do now is warm up the vocal folds so um, a gravel breath is like this now you can actually hold your larynx here if you want to feel that um, gravel sound that I'm creating Okay, so when you get that raspy sound, right in the middle of your voice, you know that you've warmed up your vocal folds, so it's like this. I would do this for about a minute, okay, just warm up that vocal fold and keep going for it. If you feel as though there's no sound or it feels um, it's not as strong as it should be, the best thing is to swallow. So you're lubricating the back of the throat and um, the lining will go on the vocal fold so it won't go too dry. So I'll just swallow. And straight away you can hear the sound difference because it's not dry, it's lubricated. So again, you're warming up the vocal folds. Um, you're bringing that warmth in, so the elasticity is in the vocal folds, so you're going to get a maximum, uh, it helps with projection, <clears throat> um, 
and obviously clarity in the voice. Okay, so once you've done that, the next thing that I would do is uh, work on some tongue twisters. So there's plenty of tongue twisters that you can find on the internet, you can make your own up. Um, I'll go for a couple that um, I use, I like to use. Um, and the tongue twisters, try and vary what you do with tongue twisters so you sort of touch on the vowel sounds as well as consonant sounds. So one of the ones I like is um, Sister Susie Sewing Shirts for Soldiers. Now when I speak and I do a tongue twister, I don't just say it, I really work on the exaggeration of my mouth, so I'm working the lips, the teeth and the tongue. So my articulation, articulation is about how you use the anatomy to create sound. And that's what I'm doing, I'm controlling my breathing, I'm, I'm using my tongue, I'm using my mouth, so everything's being used slightly exaggerated so I get the maximum or the best sound possible to say the tongue twister. So, Sister Susie sewing shirts for soldiers. Sister Susie sewing shirts for soldiers. Sister Susie sewing shirts for soldiers. And you keep going on with that. Probably do about five to ten, and then after that, change it to another one. So, another one is um, Unique New York, Unique New York, Unique New York, Unique New York. You can see the way I'm pulling back on my mouth, okay, to get a, a really, really sharp sound, but an exaggerated sound. An exaggerated expression to say the words, but again, this brings that elasticity. Um, and another one that I like to do is <clears throat> I, I, an actor I admire, I must admit, I think he's a very good actor, uh, but his name's even better for it. Well, not even better, but it's a good, his name is very good for tongue twisters, and that is Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay, and then you go through the process of tongue twisters, and then if you've got time, depending on how long you want to do to warm up before the audition, I'll talk about how long you should really do to make sure that you're in the right place. Another one that you could do is working on <coughs> projection and clarity and um, articulation and vowel sounds, and that is um, um, going through the alphabet. Um, and you start with um, B, as a matter of fact, you go B, pick a back a pick a back a ba ba ba, kick a kick a kick a kick a car car car, dick a dick a dick a dick a da da da, jick a jack a jick a jack a ja ja ja, pick a back a pick a back a ba ba ba, hick a kick a hick a kick a ha ha ha. So you keep going through, you say the um, the letter of the alphabet, I suppose, and you keep going through it like that. Um, and again, that brings elasticity, it gets tempo, it gets your mouth warmed up, you get into a nice rhythm, um, it helps with articulation and diction as well, so you get clarity at the end of the words, you're not clipping the words. Make sure that you don't get into the habit <coughs> of um, clipping the end of words, that's lazy pronunciation. Okay, so, um, that effectively would be your warm-up. I'm now ready to go into that room and actually give the best audition I can possibly give. I've got no excuse. You know, I can't blame that I didn't warm up before because my voice croaked or that I had tension around my neck and shoulders because I didn't loosen up. Or, um, you know, um, for whatever reason. <laughs> There's always reasons for uh, not doing well. But in this, in this case, you should do really well through your preparation um, and obviously the warm that I've just introduced you to. So I advise you to warm up um, and do the best you can and enjoy it. Once you're there, there's nothing better knowing that you could not have done anything else um, in that audition room to show them how good you are. And who knows, it might be your turn to um, shine. Thanks very much. Bye.